All right. Um, so you've just turned in homework. Well, whatever the number is, it was the last one, your last homework assignment. So now you've got the project done. All of your homework is finished. And we've just got the final exam ahead of us. Uh, that exam is scheduled for Tuesday the 7th. Um, we'll be doing it from 10.15 to 12.15. I've already talked about some of the parameters of that, how you're able to prepare your own um, front and back page of notes. If you didn't previously pick up the notes that you prepared for exam two, you can collect that from the civil engineering office up on the second floor. Um, Ordinarily, our exams are only 50 minutes long, right? We have 120 minutes for this exam. And so the, the final exam will be longer, um, but it's not going to be 12 fifths longer. You know, it, it's not going to be as long as, uh, as you might expect given the added time. Um, maybe there'll be twice as many questions as usual. And then that'll give us both a chance to, for me to ask a variety of different things and for you to um, not have your grade determined just by a narrow subset of what you've learned this semester. You'll have more opportunities over a range of topics. Any questions about the final exam? So how do you even begin to prepare for something like a final exam? Um, Probably the best way is to attend class through the entire semester, uh, to keep up with your homework assignments, you know, pay attention, take notes. If you've done those things, then the final exam um, really isn't something to get too worked up about. Uh, but if you do want to really go above and beyond and make sure that you're completely prepared, um, you could go through the in-class exercises again, review your homework assignments. Um, you know, going through the textbook and paying special attention anytime you see a figure, because figures, you know, they say a picture is worth a thousand words, and so anytime there's a figure in the applicable text, there's probably an important concept there that's being delivered. All right, so today we're going to talk about depreciation. Uh, by the way, another exam tip is don't text during class. It make you focus a little bit better on the material if you put your phone away. Um, we're going to be talking about different types of depreciation. And depreciation is a decrease in the value of equipment over time. And so here is a picture of two different Hondas. Uh, the Honda on the left is obviously quite a lot newer than the Honda on the right. And um, of course, from a practical standpoint, it's a bad thing when your equipment starts to wear out. I mean, you'd, you'd like for it to last as long as possible, and that's only logical. But from an accounting perspective, what you want is you want your equipment to wear out as quickly as possible from an accounting perspective. And the reason for that is the depreciation, which is the reduction in the value of your equipment, that depreciation can be counted as a deduction against taxes. And so each year, when a business figures up how much tax it has to pay to the government, they're going to look at what was their income, what were the costs associated with business? And they only pay tax on the profit. You pay tax on the difference between your income and expenses. And one of the expenses the government allows you to include is the expense of the equipment that you've purchased. And you can't get the entire deduction in one year when you buy equipment because you're going to be using it for a longer period of time. And so instead of giving you the full deduction, like if you're buying a machine that's going to last for 10 years, <laughs> what the government will do is they'll allow you to take a portion of that item's value as a deduction over several different years. It may not be 10 years. 10 years just happens to be how long it's physically going to last. But there are a, a variety of different regulations that says how quickly you can take that deduction and over what time frame. So that's what we're going to be talking about today is this beautiful thing that allows government, uh, allows businesses to reduce their income tax. They're really excited about depreciation. They want to take as much of it as possible and as quickly as possible. They want to accelerate depreciation because dollars now are more valuable than dollars in the future. So that's part of the reason why you want to get the depreciation as quickly as possible. So a couple of terms related to depreciation. First of all, the cost basis, B, is the original price of the item. 
when you first got it, including the cost of getting it installed and perhaps even training the operators to use the equipment. It's the all-in cost and expense of whatever the item is. And then the book value is in any given year, what is the remaining value of that item from an accounting perspective. This is separate from the fair market value of the equipment. The fair market value is how much could you get if you actually put an ad out and someone purchased it from you. That's separate from the book value. The book value is just how much of the original purchase price still remains after accounting for this steady reduction in value that's known as depreciation. So what we're going to talk about today is three different methods for calculating the rate of depreciation over time so that you can know in any given year how much book value remains in your equipment and what is the depreciation for that year which you could count as part of your expenses. So the simplest method we're going to talk about today is straight line depreciation. Um, and you'll see why in just a moment why it's called straight line. It's because each year there's a constant amount of depreciation. It's a linear assumption that says if you buy an item every year you, you lose the same dollar value of its uh, book value. And in straight line depreciation you assume it goes from the initial book value, the, the first cost, all the way to zero. So there's no salvage value in the straight line method. Declining balance is a little bit more sophisticated and realistic. Declining balance assumes that more depreciation occurs early in the, the item's useful life and that the longer you own it, the depreciation slows down. So remember I told you I kept my previous car for 12 years? The first couple of years I owned my car, it was losing value quickly. But then by the end, it doesn't matter so much from year to year if it's one year older. So the reduction in depreciation slows down with declining balance and you can consider a salvage value in this method. Instead of having an equal amount each year, there's an equal fraction each year in the declining balance approach. So it would be some percentage of the previous year's balance that is depreciated in each year. And finally, the Modified Accelerated Cost Recovery System, MACRS, uh, otherwise sometimes known as the General Depreciation System, this is a hybrid of the two approaches. It starts with declining balance and then it switches over to straight line. So it also takes the value of the item down to zero and that's why um, the, this system is being used predominantly is because it has the benefits of both of these approaches. It has the, the benefit of accelerated depreciation up front but then it also depreciates to zero in the end and so you get the, the full value of the depreciation. And it's simpler from a numerical standpoint as well because there's just these published tables that tell you what fraction to use for each year. So we're going to talk about all three of these. Here's the formula for straight line depreciation. Remember D is the depreciation amount in a given year. So D sub T is just saying in a certain year the depreciation amount is the difference between the initial book value, the salvage value, and then the number of years in the recovery period. And actually the depreciation is the same every year. So it doesn't matter what T is. T is not a variable on the right hand side of the equation because every year depreciation occurs the amount is the same. So then the book value in any given year is just the initial book value, the first cost basis, minus the accumulated depreciation through all of the years. So if you've gone three years into this item's useful life, then you would multiply three by the depreciation amount in each year. Okay, so let me show you an illustration of this. If we had a certain piece of equipment that cost $20,000 to begin with, and after five years we know the salvage value will be $5,000, then 
Here's a plot of what that looks like. Straight line depreciation because the line is straight. Each year, there's a constant amount of depreciation that's occurring. And you can see here in part A, the depreciation amount in year three, for example, is going to be the same as any other year. But it's B minus S, so 20,000 minus uh, 5,000. So in the numerator will be 15,000. And then dividing that by the five-year life, and that's $3,000 per year. So every year you own the item, it will lose $3,000 of depreciation. And so then if you wanted to know the book value in the third year, you could do it graphically and just you know follow up from year three and over to the left. Oh, it's 11,000. Or it would just be 20,000 at time zero, 17,000 after the first year, 14,000 after the second year, 11,000 after the third year. You're just subtracting 3,000 every year. So that's the same as doing three times 3,000 because it's 3,000 each year and there were three years of depreciation. All right, so st straight line's easy. Let's take a look at the in-class exercise. Let's solve the straight line part. In the uh, in-class exercise for today, we have a uh, loader, a mixer, and a crusher. So our company is purchasing those three items. We know the recovery period and the salvage value. And so each one of these items has a different recovery period, as you can see, a different starting cost and a different salvage value. So we want to know the total depreciation accounting for all three of the equipment items in the first year. So the formulas are here. What you're going to do is you're going to find B minus S divided by N for the loader, for the mixer, for the crusher, and then add it together here for part A. And then for part B, you'll use this formula because it's talking about the book value in year three. I'll pause for a second and give you some time to go over this. Let's just focus on A and B for now. Of course, if you finish both of those quickly, feel free to move on to C and D, but A and B is what we'll focus on for now. Yeah, put the solution up on the screen if you want to glance at it. If you're still calculating, of course, feel free, keep going. But this will give you some confirmation if you are headed in the right direction. To part C and D, um, ordinarily when when we had more weeks in the semester, I would make depreciation two lectures. But now I've collapsed it down into one. So uh, we got to keep moving here. So in part C, where it's asking for the book value at the end of year five, uh, the reason I've asked that is just to illustrate the point that if the mixer only lasts for four years, then it has no more book value. So it's depreciated down to zero at the end of the fourth year. And so in the fifth year, the book value only includes the value of the loader and the crusher. And so you'd simply begin with the initial basis and then subtract five years of whatever depreciation amount that you had calculated so far. And then finally, in part D, it's asking how much depreciation is there in year eight. So if we look up at the initial data, the loader is out after seven years. The mixer was out after four. So in year eight, the only thing that's going to be depreciating is the crusher. So it's just the depreciation amount for the crusher in year eight. So each year's depreciation amount is constant for each piece of equipment. But since our equipment is ending at different times, you have to keep track of both the different amount for each piece of equipment and when was the, uh, the equipment 
finished from the accounting perspective. So any questions about the ideas behind straight line depreciation? Okay. <clears throat> well, declining balance. <clears throat> Remember, declining balance is a little bit more complicated because instead of having the same number of dollars each year, it is a percentage of the previous year's book value that is depreciated each year. So you can think of it as a constant percentage. Uh, sometimes the percentage that you're going to be using is just described outright in the problem statement. Like the problem statement would say something like 150% declining balance, depreciation. And what that means is that in the first year, <coughs> you'd have 150% of the depreciation that you'd see if it was straight line. So the percentage is, uh, is relative to what the straight line depreciation would have been. Um, another way of doing this depreciation is when you have, instead of the problem statement telling you the percentage, sometimes it'll tell you what is the ultimate salvage value that it's going to achieve after a certain number of years. So this is the formula that we use for depreciation in a given year. It is some factor D multiplied by the previous year's book value. So BV is book value. T minus one just means last year. So the depreciation amount this year is last year's book value multiplied by this factor D. And D can be calculated the two ways that I mentioned. One is when a percentage is told to you and the other is when the final salvage value, S, is told to you. So you have to choose one of those two ways depending on what information you're given in the problem statement. So let me illustrate. Um, <clears throat> oh, well, before I illustrate, the, the book value over time is just probably the simplest way to do it is that the book value this year is going to be last year's book value minus this year's depreciation. So if you're thinking about it in spreadsheet terms where every row is a different year, then to calculate the book value, it would just be last year's book value minus this year's depreciation. But if you're doing the calculations on paper rather than on a spreadsheet, you can use this formula because uh, what this is saying is it's the initial cost basis and then 1 minus d to the t power, where t is the number of years. So that would take into account the cumulative effect of depreciation over time, where you have t is how many years have passed since the start when you purchased the item. Okay, so here's the illustration just to show you how things fit together. Let's say that we purchase a truck with a first cost of $80,000, and its lifespan is 10 years. So we'll use both of those two different methods. We're going to use the 150% depreciation, so we're going to calculate D with a given percentage. And then separately, just to illustrate the other approach, let's calculate what would D be if the salvage value was known to be $10,000 after 10 years. So these are two completely separate setups just to illustrate the two different methods. Okay, so in the first, which is here on the left, let me make that a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. All right, well, now this is in the wrong way. <laughs> Let's just, okay, so 150%, N is 10, B is 80,000. Now the salvage value isn't defined in part A because this is the one where we're using the 150%. So D is calculated by 150 divided by 100, and then N in the denominator is 10. So it's essentially 150 divided by 1,000. So D, this fraction is 0.15. So what that means is that the depreciation every year is 0.15 times the previous year's book value. So get your calculator out. What's 80,000 times 0.15? 80,000 times 0.15 is 12,000. 
So then this year's book value is last year's 80,000 minus this year's depreciation, and that's 68,000. Okay, so then at the end of the first year, the book value is 68,000. If you multiply that by 0.15, so 68,000, multiply it by 0.15, then you get 10,200. So then 68,000 minus 10,200 leaves you with 57,800. And you can see that the process continues on and on. And uh, if I wanted to find the depreciation in any year, it's just going to be this factor, lowercase d, multiplied by the previous year's book value. And this other formula that we saw here, the book value in a given year is the initial book value multiplied by 1 minus d to the t. Let's try that out. Let me paste this formula here. All right, so it's here at the top. A little hard to read because it's on top of some other things. But let's find out what's the book value for year six. Okay, so the initial basis is 80,000, so 80,000 into your calculator. And then one minus D, so one minus 0.15, so that leaves us with 0.85 to the power of, we're gonna do it for year six. So 0.85 to the power of six, so you should get 0.3771 four, nine, five, and so on. Multiply that by 80,000, and it gives $30,171.96. So it, you can see rounded off here in the spreadsheet. That matches if we did it the sequential method. So this formula does work, as does the spreadsheet approach. So that's part A when we are using the, um, the percentage to calculate D. If instead we start with a salvage value, we don't use the percentage. So here, let me just uh, make that clear here. The percentage does not apply if you are using the, uh, the given salvage value. All right, so the book value is still 80,000, but then this $15,019.81 we got that because this D value isn't the same 0.15 that it was before. You know, try and calculate the lowercase d in your calculator. So 1 minus S divided by B. So 10,000 divided by 80,000 to the power of 1 divided by N. So what we're saying is <coughs> D, I'll write this on the whiteboard. D is 1 minus 10,000 divided by 80,000 to the power of 1 divided by 10. Okay, so to the power of 0 0.1. 0.18774760 and so on. Okay, so you get this factor D, you're just calculating it a different way, but then all of the method is the same after that you can see that this depreciation amount for year one is the previous year's book value multiplied by the factor D. And then you find the book value at the end of this year by it's the previous year's book value minus this year's depreciation. And the same trend continues. The only difference is that it terminates, you can see, at that 10,000, which we said was going to be our salvage value. So kind of what we did is we picked a D value that we knew would get us to this salvage of $10,000 after 10 years. Okay, I want you to practice the declining balance method. You won't have a homework assignment on this, but you may have an exam question on it. So it's good that you're here getting some practice. Um, you can use Excel or by hand. Um, we have a roadway paving machine that costs 486,000 and it's gonna last for eight years. And so big B, is 486,000 and N is eight. All right, so we're gonna use both the declining balance approach and the approach where we have a fixed salvage value. So 
find out the depreciation in book value for the first three years with both of these approaches. And you can do it either with Excel or I did it with hand calculations. That's what I'll be bringing up on the screen in just a minute is the hand calculations. But either way is fine. I mean, so in a sense, this is a little bit monotonous if you do it by hand. You know, if you set things up on Excel, it saves you the trouble of having to calculate over and over and over again. You can see that um, the depreciation amount in the first year is going to be 91125 So then the book value would be the starting book value minus this year's depreciation. So that gives me 394875 and then the book value at the end of the next year is just the previous year's book value minus the depreciation amount that's occurred this year. Or the other approach, of course, is just to use T equals 2. So you could follow either method and get the, uh, the same number. But this is the 150% uh, declining balance. And then let me pull up on the screen if you have a, a defined salvage value. Okay, so in the time that remains, let's talk about the modified accelerated cost recovery system. Um, in this system, it depreciates to zero, which companies like, because they want to get as much depreciation as possible. And the other thing that they like is that it switches from double declining balance. So what that means is it's the declining balance method where the percentage is set as 200. So the first year's depreciation will be twice as much as if it was straight line. So in other words, the curve is steeper, more of the depreciation occurs up front, which is when the money is more valuable. And then it switches over to straight line depreciation. And that would be pretty complicated if you had to be the one calculating that transition, but you don't. They just provide tables for you that rely on standardized recovery periods. And so in this method, when you buy a thing, it doesn't matter how long it's going to actually last. It just matters what category that thing is in. Now, one of the strange artifacts of this modified accelerated cost recovery system is that even if the service life of the item is, let's say, five years, you take the depreciation over six years. And the reason why is that in the first year, you only get half a year's share of depreciation because they're trying to avoid a certain loophole. What they're trying to avoid is what if somebody bought a piece of equipment on December 31st but then they tried to count a whole year of depreciation even though they only owned it for a single day. So They're trying to reduce the incentive for playing games with the timing of when you purchase equipment by only giving you a half share of depreciation in the first year. So uh, I'll show you on the table what that results in, but I wanted to fill you in on the, the rationale for why the recovery time is different from the class life. The class life is N, but then the actual recovery time is longer because you take a half share in the first year and a half share in the last year. Okay. Um, the... Uh, here is a list of different types of equipment, and you can see the, 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 what's considered the class life and then the actual recovery period that would apply if you're using, there's two different methods within these. GDS is the more widespread. Um, let's say, for instance, that you have equipment that's used for mining. 
mining equipment. So that maybe would be a belt in a coal mine that is taking the coal out. So just based on that category of equipment, then you would depreciate it out over seven years. You know, its, it's useful life may be typically closer to 10, but we're going to actually have a seven year recovery period. And then if we look at the table for that, it would actually be spread out over eight years because of the half share in the first and the last. So let's use a seven year GDS recovery period. And here is the table where if you have a seven year recovery period in the first year, the depreciation amount would be 0.1429 multiplied by the initial cost basis. And then in the second year, the depreciation amount would be 0.2449 times the initial cost basis. So you can see that this last year, it, you know, it's transitioning from double declining balance to straight line. So there are a couple of years in here where it's the same. So see the 0 0.0893 and then followed again by 0 0.089, essentially 3, 0 0.0893. So there are three years of straight line and then just that half share of depreciation in the final year. So the uh, calculation of how much depreciation occurs is just multiplying it by these factors and then the book value would be you start with the initial book value and you subtract out over time. So here's the formula. The depreciation in any given year would be the D percentage for that year multiplied by the initial book value and then the book value in a given year is the initial cost basis minus the cumulative depreciation. All right, so just to get a quick practice on this, let's say that you spent $237,000 to purchase a bus in the year 2018. So let's figure out what is the depreciation and book value for each of the following years that applies. Let me do this on a spreadsheet just to accelerate the process since we only have six minutes remaining. Okay, so I'm starting up the Excel spreadsheet. Oh, this is strange. I don't think I've, oh, that's project. That's not, that's why it didn't look familiar. Excel is what I want. <clears throat> okay, so a bus. First of all, how many years is a bus going to depreciate over? So here's the asset class, 0, 0 0.23 buses. So we're going to use GDS, which is a five-year recovery period. Okay, so let me paste that table over here so I can refer to it as I have my initial cost basis is 238000 And then um, I guess we could say that's the value at, at time zero. And then at time one, two, three, and so on down through five, I'm going to, I guess, let me put in another, let me move this just a bit higher here. So I'm going to calculate the depreciation and then the book value. And to calculate the depreciation, we need to know the factor D, the lowercase d. So. Um, for the five-year life, it would start with 0.2 off of this table, then 0 0.32, 0 0192, 0 0.1152, 0 0.1152, and 0.00576. If you add all of that up, it adds up to, well, it should add up to one. Have I missed something or typed it in incorrectly? Let's see. 32.19. Oh, two, an extra. Thank you. Yeah, there's an extra zero there. Yeah, so if you add it all up, see, I'm checking down here at the bottom the sum. The sum should equal one because that just indicates that you've depreciated the full value. So the depreciation amount in a given year is this factor multiplied by the initial cost basis. Okay, so. You can see that in my first year, I only get that half share of depreciation, then a lot of depreciation in year two. And so then the book value will be the initial book value minus this year's depreciation. And the next year's book value will be the previous year's book value minus 
this year's depreciation. And then I can just drag that down through, and it should go to zero if I've done things correctly. Okay, so just to illustrate this entire process again, you basically, from the problem statement, ascertain what is the useful life. So it's a bus. Bus is five years for GDS. So now here in the GDS table, I go to the five-year column, I want to copy these lowercase d factors into the spreadsheet. So here's these d factors that came from a five-year recovery period, which ironically actually lasts for six years. Okay, so then the depreciation amount in any given year is this factor multiplied by the initial basis. So I'm anchoring that reference because it's always going to look at the initial basis when I drag it down through the rest of the years. And then the book value in any given year is the previous year's book value minus this year's depreciation. So the previous year's book value minus this year's depreciation and so on till we get to zero. All right, so that is depreciation. We've talked about three different techniques. Straight line, declining balance, and the modified accelerated cost recovery system, which is essentially what's used most widespread today. That's all I have for you today. We'll talk about taxes on Friday. So I hope to see you then. So why did it last for six years? Because they give you only a half share of depreciation in the first year. <laughs>